Hi, I'm your host, Didi Che. Audio Builders TV presents Why Guitar Players Should Care About Electronics. This is a multi-part series presented by John Snyder. John is a PhD student at Boston University and is the owner and chief engineer of Electronic Audio Experiments, a small batch manufacturer of stomp boxes and tube amps. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and sign up for our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Hi everyone, welcome to Audio Builders TV. I'm John from Electronic Audio Experiments. Last time we talked about analyzing a distortion pedal, a very simple but very instructive design using op amps and diodes to achieve an edgy, distorted guitar tone. We're gonna shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about frequency and filters. The basis of frequency is something we call Fourier analysis. Uh, a very long time ago, some mathematicians figured out that you can construct any waveform using a series of pure tones. Uh, if you take a bunch of sine waves and you add them up in an infinite series, you literally can put together anything you want to. So how does this apply to uh, sound? Well, if you strike a C on a piano or if you pluck a C on a guitar, they're going to have the same pitch but a very different tonality. And that's because despite having the same fundamental frequency, the overtone series or the extra pure tones being added to this are different in so many different ways. So you can see from this graph that if you combine a whole bunch of waves, you can get something that even looks like a square wave. Um, and that actually goes into uh, DSP as well because we have the ability to reconstruct any waveform, even digitally, using the tools developed by Fourier analysis. So now, if we wanted to start manipulating those tones, we can use basic filters. Um, I don't know about everyone else, but when I got my first guitar amp, I thought that the treble knob was going to make my high notes sound louder, the mid knob was going to make my middle notes sound louder, and the bass knob was going to make my bass notes sound louder. As it turns out, that's not quite accurate. Really, it's the overtone series that you're going to be manipulating when you play with tone controls. Of course, you can affect the fundamental in some way, but really it's more of a subtle effect affecting, you know, changing the timbre of your instrument. But how do we achieve these filters? Here I have uh, two different kinds of filters, a high pass filter and a low pass filter. Both of these can be made from a single resistor and capacitor. The high pass filter does exactly what it says. It lets high frequencies pass through, and those frequencies are going to be determined by the value of the resistor and the capacitor. Similarly, we have a low pass filter, which is going to cut low frequency, we're going to let low frequencies through and cut high frequencies. You'll often see a high pass filter at the input of a circuit in order to block out unwanted low frequencies like rumble and mud, whereas you'll see a high, a high pass filter or a low pass filter at the end in order to cut out things like harshness, fizz, uh, you know, extra distortion products that you might not want to hear, uh, and all those sorts of things. You also will see a low pass filter used to block radio signals out of an input. And you can find this in a guitar amp. You can find this in a mic preamp. Uh, you can even find this in non-audio equipment to get rid of unwanted noise radiating from RF sources. So if you were to look at a filter in a graph, uh, one of these passive filters from before, you get something that looks like this slide. Uh, the cutoff frequency is going to be calculated with this simple equation. Fc is equal to one over two pi rc where R and C are the value of the resistor and capacitor, respectively. That way, with using resistors and capacitors, you can tune a filter. In fact, if you replace that R with a variable resistor or a potentiometer, you can make a tone control. If you put a bunch of different filters together with potentiometers on all of them, you can very quickly make a complex tone stack like you might find in a guitar amplifier, where you can control treble, mid, and bass at the same time. And I'm not talking about the notes. Now, the most complicated, or really the most powerful kind of EQ is a graphic EQ. A graphic EQ gives you the ability to cut and boost an individual frequency. And here you can see a whole bunch of sliders corresponding to different frequencies and where they're set, plus the graph showing the actual frequency spectrum of the output signal. So as you can see, these filters will let you really do almost anything that you want to be able to do. Even if there's like a uh, really unwanted like noise or ringing, you can cut that one out specifically while preserving the overtones of everything else that you want to keep. So filters are a really powerful tool, not just for the guitar player, but for almost anyone.
Thanks for watching Audio Builders Television. I'm John Snyder.